Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to Join News Prime live from our studio here in Accra. We're live on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125 around the world on myjoyonline.com. Coming up, government finally clears 14 out of 182 containers of health products from the Tema port almost a year, but none of the consignment contains HIV antiretroviral drugs. 14 containers of health commodities comprising 10 containers of malaria rapid diagnostic tests, one container of malaria injection, and three containers of malaria medicine. Details as the Ghana HIV and AIDS network says they must be included in a committee set up to address future clearance challenges. Now, also coming up in this bulletin, it's been back and forth between drivers, mates, and passengers as passengers resist what they deem as unauthorized transport fare increment. Details as GPRTU tells passengers not to pay fares higher than what they currently pay. Mm. We came out with a community. Right. We are updating you. Transport to places to hold on to coming Wednesday when we sit and finalize this. Whatever decision will arrive at, we'll bring it out to the public domain. Also The government has finally cleared 14 out of the 182 containers of health product locked up at the Tema port for almost a year. The consignment, which were earlier said to contain HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria product, have been stuck at the port since May 2023 because of non-payment of import duties. But it is emerging from the ceremony held at the Tema port to hand over the 14 containers to the Ministry of Health today that none of the containers have HIV antiretroviral drugs. Listen to Chief Director of the Ministry of Health, Al Haji Hafiz Adams. I am informed that the total cost of clearing these containers is within the neighborhood of 17 million Ghana cities. Now, let him state that from January to April, 2024, there has been about 34 shipments to the Kotoka International Airport, as well as the Tema Port. I'm getting to this from the side, so let me see. Now, the recent shipment of the antiretroviral drugs, about nine containers arrived at the Thermal Port on 7th April 2024. And the clearing process is likely to be completed with delivery to the warehouse expected shortly not later than 19th April 2024. Let him state emphatically that so far, about 267 containers out of the 435 containers of global farm commodities have been cleared from the Tema port. They include bed nets, antiretroviral medicines, malaria medicines and injections, as well as TB medicines for the three vertical program under the Global Fund. We have about 168 more containers left to be cleared at an estimated cost of approximately 17 million Ghana cities. And this includes non-medicine commodities like bed nets and rapid diagnostic tests. Today, as we have already been told, 14 containers of health commodities comprising 10 containers of malaria rapid diagnostic tests, one container of malaria injection, 
and three containers of malaria medicine will be delivered to the Ministry of Health for onwards transmission to the warehouse. Now, Director of the Revenue Policy Division at the Ministry of Finance, George Winfold, has assured that government has taken steps to forestall any future lockup of health products at the ports. Not all taxes are allowed under the Exemptions Act. In this respect, special provision of 40 million Ghana cities was made by the Ministry of Finance to cover transnational taxes, that is, AU and ECOWAS levies. What remained outstanding to be settled was the associated third-party charges, which the donors, per our earlier understanding, had committed to take up. Unfortunately, upon arrival of the consignment at the port, the associated charges could not be paid and this information was also not communicated to the Ministry of Finance on time. Coupled with this, our investigations also confirmed that many of the players in the health delivery chain still do not understand the exemptions arrangement, hence the delays in the clearing of consignments at the port. Upon establishing these facts, the Ministry of Finance coordinated with Ministry of Health, Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, NIB, and other governmental agencies came together to ensure that the situation was resolved as soon as possible. Going forward, to ensure that such an incident does not recur, an interdict an intergovernmental committee is being set up comprising of representatives of the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Health, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, and Ghana Revenue Authority. The committee will work together to address such matters should they come up to ensure their swift resolution. I've well, we'll been joined by the PRO to the um, Health Ministry, Isaac Offer. We're grateful to you, Mr. Offer, for joining us. Now, it's surprising to hear that the consignment cleared today had no HIV antiretroviral drugs. What exactly is the situation around this? Yes. So, good evening once again to your cherished uh, viewers. Hmm. The HIV antiretroviral drugs were never part of the consignment left at the port to be cleared. But as a ministry, we never give preference to any commodity. All commodities that we receive from our donors are of equal preference. And so when you find yourself in the public domain on some issues like this that we just experienced, what the public want to see is for you to deliver your mandates. There are goods at the port to be cleared. So the public wants us to clear the goods. And it is only after you finish with your mandate that you've been able to achieve the mandate, then you can come back and explain the real situation on the ground. Mm -hmm. Do we there then... had never been any okay. antiretroviral drugs within the 182 containers at the port. Okay. There had never been any HIV antiretroviral drug there. However, like I stated earlier, mm -hmm. all the drugs that we have in those containers are of equal preference to the Ministry of Health. We've received consignment from May 2023 to December 2023. And between May to December, we've been able to clear over 250 containers. So if we could remember, last year around June, there was this demonstration that challenges the ministry for delayance of such commodities at the port. We show proof of evidence that we're clearing some drugs at the port just like what we did today. And so we cannot say that these drugs have been at the port for over a year Rather, there were some drugs that we received, some containers that we received around December. Mm -hmm. However, the, the core mandate is that we don't need to have our drugs at the port. So, 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 so uh, how, but what, one explains, to know that. what explains, I mean, the call by the people living with HIV, that there seemed to be shortage of antiretroviral drugs at the hospitals, 
And, and therefore, and they had information that part of the containers locked up at the port had some of these drugs. Yes, yeah, so like I said earlier, mm -hmm. at that time, what we need to do as a ministry is to get those drugs out. And I want to, I want to put it clear out there that mm. the ministry had already started working on the processes by which we're going to clear these drugs from the port before this statement was issued by the CCM group. There had been a number of meetings at the Ministry of Finance, led by Hanabu Oslawusu, the chief director of the Ministry of Health, the minister for, uh, uh, caretaker minister for the Ministry of Health, Hanabu Abna, the minister of state, Ministry of Finance. Mm. And so we have gone far mm. with the resolution as to how we will be able to avoid such incidents at the port. This keeps coming. And we create drugs also at the airport. When we have donations coming from the airport, we don't face such challenges. And so why don't we practice exactly what we do at the port, at the harbor? And those were the kind of bottlenecks that we need to come together, stakeholder engagement. Okay. Where we have the Ministry of Finance, the Ghana Port and Harbor Authority, the Ghana Revenue Authority, Ministry mm. of Health, all of them coming together. Mm. to look at the possible ways by which we can avoid such incidents. Mm. Global Fund are our partners. This no, no, but, but, partners. But, but my question was about why we have persons living with HIV complaining about shortage of antiretroviral drugs, and they, according to them, their information was that part of these containers had HIV antiretroviral drugs. But we're being told today that none of the containers left contains... Uh, HIV antiretroviral drugs. That's why I'm asking, how come yes. that's happening? Yes, health is a shared responsibility. Let me, let me put it here, that Ghana Health Service, child, and all the health facilities under government, mm. none of them has reported or have issued a statement to the Ministry of Health that there had been shortage of such drugs at their various facilities. None of them. Okay. Even if they had issued such statement, even if, when you go to our cold rooms, we have such drugs at the at cold stores. Okay. And okay. so it's sometimes some of the statements, like I said, if we have to come and be following that at a time, we, we may not have gotten here. Mm. Mm. But what we need to do as a ministry was to go and deliver on our mandate, okay. carrying the goods out there. That's fine. We so are so, not, so, so how, 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 long, how long should we expect that these containers will be cleared, oh, the, 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 the remaining ones? The, as well. the remaining uh, 160 is, yes. is uh, the mosquito nets. We yeah. expect that within next week we should be able to clear them also from there. Okay. And let me also put it on record that mm. the, the bottleneck mm. breakage has mm. come to salvage a big situation, a very big situation. We will soon start receiving consignment from Global Fund, UNICEF and other. Okay. And so okay. when we receive those Global Fund donations in, uh, going forward, we're not going to face such challenges. Okay. All right. Grateful to hear and, that and so particular. We are very happy mm. that we've come this far. Mm -hmm. And want to assure Ghanaians that um, so far, so good, there have been no shortage of HIV, antiretroviral drugs well, in this country. We have been hearing them tell us that they are facing challenges. But if you say so, we'll, we'll, we'll go around and cross-check as well for you. But I'm, I'm yes. grateful in the meantime for joining us here. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Ghana HIV and AIDS Network is calling on government to include them in the committee set up to deal with future challenges. NS Amwating Watson is convener for the network. The, what I would say first and foremost is that that kind of um, uh, tripartite um, arrangement should include the uh, CCM, the Country Coordinating Mechanism of the Global Fund, because um, we are very uh, important stakeholders in this whole matter, and so we should be part of that particular arrangement. Um, but like we have always said, we are still going to go ahead and send our petition to the presidency, because we, we believe that this shouldn't have happened in the first place. So um, the arrangements that um, the GRA and the ministry say they want to put together, we want to be sure that indeed we follow through with it so that there will be a lasting solution. Mm -hmm. One of the key solutions that we require right. is a blanket waiver. Uh, because in the past, this has been operated before and it didn't generate any a problem. So we can go back to that uh, particular one so that you not cover just global fund donated items, but indeed um, items from all donor agencies as well. The, and, and governments and all those involved had to put together this media program to, to, to tell the whole country that indeed uh, we are being responsive. 
there are still 185 more locked up. What do you expect should be done going forward? That we don't have to revisit this matter and say that the drugs are still there. Yes, so we made a request for the media coverage and we are very happy that it complied with that request. At least it brings some transparency into the whole process. At least the media has seen the first um, consignment come out. We would like to see this as a symbolic gesture mm. because uh, the GRE uh, Commissioner General explained that there are some processes that they need to go through to make sure that they get the quantities, all of them out. Away from that, it's been back and forth between drivers, mates, and passengers regarding unauthorized transport fare increment. As of April 8th, 2024, the price of gasoline in Ghana stood at 14.15 Ghana cities per liter. Drivers say that they are left with no choice but to increase fares. Many passengers are, however, express expressing dismay over the sudden hike in prices which were implemented uh, without any official approval or prior communication from the Ghana Private Road Transport Union. There's more in the following report. In January 2024, the unions proposed a 20% increment in response to hikes in taxes, fuel and cost of other inputs. But that did not materialize until the recent jump in fuel prices forced them to return to the table. But the second approach has also been met with delays after Wednesday's meeting with government was postponed to a later date. Amidst these developments, short-distance drivers in Accra have taken matters into their own hands by independently raising fares by varying percentages. On the other hand, long-distance drivers are holding off on making any changes, awaiting official communication and direction from the union leaders. Passengers have expressed dissatisfaction with the sudden fare increases, noting that they were unaware of any official change to transport fares. We are not aware of it, and they haven't, they haven't announced it to us. Even right now, we are just fighting in the, in the bus that the Lord fares too much. Because why is it that if you want to increase the fare, you have to announce it so that we are aware. However, the Industrial Relations Officer of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, Abbas Imoro, has told passengers of commercial vehicles not to pay fares higher than what they currently pay. This comes after some commercial drivers decided to increase fares overnight without approval from their parent unions. I'm speaking to my colleague, Kenneth Jesse, Abbas Imoro insisted they have not increased fares and has thus instructed their drivers who have gone ahead to effect such increment to desist from doing so until at least after the outcome with the meeting uh, uh, of their meeting with the transport ministry next Wednesday. Our outfit heard that. So this morning there was a communicate to that effect. I don't know if you haven't signed the communicate. Mm. We came out with a communicate to that right. effect that we are pleading with. Uh, transport to places to hold on to coming Wednesday when we sit and finalize this. Whatever decision will arrive at, we'll bring it out to the public domain. Well, the communique came out today, and we strongly believe by the end of the day, everybody will be privy to. So from tomorrow, if the challenge is still there, then our leadership will see the way through. Okay, and then we understand that you are you are looking for a twenty percent increment. We, we 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 don't want to discuss the percentage outside because we are negotiating. We haven't come to conclusion. If we say something, and our people will shift on that or shift on that, it will also give us another headache. So we plead with you, let us come to final conclusion, as we've been doing all the time. We we'll come out with the community, then we we'll give some days that effective from this day, this is what we are going to do. And we we'll all move forward nicely. Away from that, family members of 55 year old coordinator of the war, Central Customer Land Secretariat, Alhaji Mutala Mahama, who was allegedly murdered this week, have called on the Inspector General of Ghana, Ghana Police Service, uh, Dr. George Akufo Dampari, to swiftly unravel the mystery surrounding his death. According to the spokesperson of the family, Seidu Tampori Idrisu, apart from the handwritten note suspected to have been written by the suspected murderer, 
that has been handed over to the police, coupled with uh, other relevant information given out. They believe that the police are well clothed to arrest the perpetrators and bring them to justice. Alaji Mutala was found dead on Thursday morning with his throat cut and lying in a pool of blood in his room at Suri, Suri Yiri. Joy News is Upper West Regional Correspondent Traffic Salam visited the family and reports from Wa. Shock, disbelief, and grief enveloped the Suri community. Landlords of the Wala traditional area are mourning. They are mourning the death of 55 year old father of four, Alaji Motala Mahama, who was allegedly stabbed on the back of his neck and slaughtered in his room on Wednesday night. His family is yet to come to terms with what transpired. I am currently at the family house of Alaji Motala Mahama, who is alleged to have been slaughtered uh, in this uh, compound. So currently, I'm just by the gate of Alaji Motala Mahama, where the alleged incident is reported to have uh, taken place. The family members told us that they waited for him for several hours because they wanted him to come around for them, for them to have uh, at least their normal conversations, but he was not forthcoming. So they decided uh, to check into this house. So when they go there, they broke into the house to the deceased, said the temporary Idrisu, recounted to us what they saw. Thursday morning, around 9 a.m., knowing very well it was a day after Salah when we prayed. People were moving around, giving salutations, salutations from here and there, greeting one another. But we couldn't see him around. So people were agitated at a point around 9 to 10 a.m. The wife too doesn't stay with him here. So we went to the wife, asked of him, then she said she, he didn't come to sleep there. But then, then we were still very inquisitive as to his whereabouts. Knowing very well around that time he should be out here, then we should be together. Then later we agreed that we have to break into the door to see what happens. And usually when he's going to sleep, he will lock the padlock inside because that's just a metallic gate as you can see from here. So from outside we're able to use one of these uh, a small hacksaw blades, cut it through, then force our way in. Lo and behold, when we entered, we saw him lying on a pool of blood with a knife, just a kitchen knife, and the knife by the head, and that was just with the truth cut. So allegedly, we are thinking that it was just uh, whatever, slaughtering in the way. The suspected murderer is alleged to have left behind a handwritten note which said to Temporu Idrisu will not like to disclose his content to the public for now. That was written, but then I cannot speak to the details of that particular note for now because it's still under investigation. We went in there with the forensic units with the CID, so they picked it up. Whatever content it was, for now they are holding to themselves, and I know at the appropriate time it will be revealed to us as a family. Apart from being the coordinator of the World Central Customary Land Secretariat, Alaji Mutala Bahama is described as industrious and for that matter revered by his family and the Walla Royals who he shared ancestral ties with. The family say they will surely miss his guidance on issues of tradition and custom of the people. Yeah, he says he's a well-known person, as we all know, the whole of and even beyond. We all know. He's young as he is, but he's called Chief Chief. Why? Because he's a chief too. Because our grandfathers are uncling Bole, the Gonjais. So they have given us a community there, which we always think as what? Chiefs, as a family. So when one of our grandfathers died, he took over. So he's a professional chief. They are tradition. In what way will this family and the whole of the Wala in Cliff be missing? In fact, it's enormous and it's immeasurable. We can't, we can't even, we cannot explain the loss okay. we are going to suffer per this action by any individual who would have caused this. The whole war, I bet you before man and God, we are going to suffer for this loss we are. 
The family is of the opinion that the said handwritten note left by the suspected murderer, which was handed over to the police CID, coupled with relevant information given to the police, clothed them properly to act quickly on the issue. We are going to be on them till we find the perpetrators of this crime. That is also we are appealing to the regional police to be up and doing that every blessed day they only see us in their office because we have given them enough evidence by now people has to have been ruled they would have been arrest but as at now no arrests have been made and the information we also have is very concrete for people to be arrested and investigation will continue from there and we are not going to relax Alaji Mutala Mahama died leaving a wife and four children. We made attempt to speak to his grief-stricken, uncontrollable, wailing wife, but was unsuccessful. <laughs> you can see that the wife of Alaji Mutala is really in grief. Uh, she doesn't want to talk to us uh, because of the incident that happened. She recalled a lot of uh, good moments that she had with her husband and for her. It's not the right time for her to speak. The body of Mutala Mahama, for now, is deposited at the Upper Australian Hospital Mall for autopsy and continuous investigations by the police CID. He is expected to be buried today under strict Islamic tradition. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Such a very sad incident there. Uh, away from that, the second Takrade Metropolitan Assembly has closed down an illegal water production company at Ntankofol, a community within the second Takrade Metropolis, for operating illegally and under insanitary conditions. The, this was revealed when the Joy News and second Takrade Metropolitan Assembly's operation cleaners around this campaign team visited the company. Listen to Abdul Karim Hudu, environmental officer of the second Takrade Metropolis Metro, Metropolitan Assembly cautioning the public to be careful of the water they buy and drink. As um, we started, the operation clean or your surroundings, we've come to Eskadu Submetro. Our first point of call is at a water producing center. Yes, when we came here, or as we are standing here, they don't have, there are three workers there, they don't have medical screening uh, certificates and they produce the water. They don't have food and drugs authority certificate. They don't have suitability report from environmental. And the last one is that they don't have a refuse container to, to put their refuse inside and then uh, join the door-to-door -door services. That is why we have closed the water treatment center. So unless he comes to pay the fine, before we come and close it. He will put everything in order before we can we can open it for him. So that's the reason why we we've closed it. Um, general public, we have to be cautious of people who produce water. Yes, um, even this one, when you go inside, when you buy a sachet water, look at the label, whether Food and Drugs Authority number is on it, because we do join uh, instruction. They have to consult us, make sure the the medical screening is done to the office, uh, those who are producing it before they also issue their certificate. And they know, but I'm sure they are not aware of this, like they also close it down. So the public should be aware of uh, uh, the illegal operat operation uh, water, such as water producers. This one is illegal operation. Uh, producing the water. In in the second place, BOP, I don't think they pay. They don't pay. And they are not registered with assembly. So there are nuisances or their problems are many. That's why we close it. We've been joined uh, via Zoom by Mr. John Last, who is a PR for the STMA with more on this. Grateful to you, John, for joining us. How long did this water company operate before being shut down on Friday? Investigation. Um, it has been established that mm. the um, facility recently 
started operating within the community. Okay. And um, we, we are very certain that um, they've been operating um, not more than six months. Um, so that may, may, may also, uh, you know, mm-hmm. inform the reason why we've not been able to, you know, identify the operation. So um, they, they recently started op- operation within the uh, community. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, but why did the assembly allow the company to operate for that long? Because, you know, as I said, I mean, um, they, they just started operating and, um, you know, but, 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 it's, it's, it, but, but it, it's been six months. That, that's, that's a long time for people to be drinking water that has not been licensed to be produced for them. Yeah, because, you uh, like, like we keep saying, uh, for, for our work, um, it is... Um, Share responsibility, so the public also has responsibility to draw our attention. Okay. Uh, indeed, we do have staff who go around to monitor and make sure that all these companies have been certified and they operate within the standard uh, approved standard um, operations. But then, in this case, um, we did not have a team, so the team moved in. So yes, um, it has been almost um, almost a month, but. Um, like you keep saying, better late than never. Of okay. course, we also urge the public to also help us by making sure that they give us information on time for us to um, take uh, the necessary actions on some of these illegal mm-hmm. operations. So what will happen now that the company has been shut down? Yes, so what, the, what we said to them was to make sure that by Monday, they report to our submetro office. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will take them through the processes to make sure that um, they regularize their operation. Um, our officers will go to the site, give them all the requirements they are to follow before uh, we, we allow them to resume operation. Okay. Um, like my colleague, the environmental health officer indicated, there are other agencies that are supposed to authorize them uh, before operating. We'll make sure that they go through all the processes uh, before um, they will be allowed to Resume operation. Okay. Now, now this is this operation clean your surroundings campaign. What's the next phase of of, of that? Yes, could you, um, we we keep moving from community to community, uh, unannounced. That's so uh, yes. we'll be moving to another community somewhere next week. But um, we, we I cannot announce the day because we always want to uh, visit the community unannounced to make sure that at least uh, we can get those who are not respecting um, sanitation, um, you know, good sanitation practices. So, yes, the uh, operation is ongoing. Uh, we continue to make sure that the people uh, appreciate the need to keep their surroundings clean, uh, make sure that they follow the um, approved standard and procedures for um, doing business within the metropolis. Okay. All right. Grateful to you, John, for joining us. And that uh, as part of the Joy News STMA, clean your surroundings campaign there. This is still the Joy News uh, uh, Prime here on the channel. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Do stay. Welcome back from the break. Now, a 28-year-old Bogatanga biker who is now on a cycling expedition to Accra, says three key factors inspired him to embark on the journey. Now, James Kumbeni, advocate for green mobility, particularly the usage of bicycles, which have no detrimental influence on the environment. He says engaging individuals on a trip to Kumasi and their reactions provide a picture of how uninformed people are about climate change, hence the need to educate and sensitize Ghanaians about the phenomenon's impact. Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin spoke with James after the crew arrived in Kumasi. In three days, James has already covered over 540 kilometers from Bolga to Kumasi. Today, Thursday, he would begin the remaining journey from Kumasi to Accra, which is about 250 kilometers. Considering the distance covered by James so far, you should be seeing him in Accra latest by Friday. But let's engage James about the challenges, great moments, and the lovely people he met on his way to Kumasi. We would also talk about environmental sustainability. What inspired you to embark on this challenge? 
journey of riding bicycle from Bologna to Accra. You use your bicycle, your bicycle doesn't really produce any carbon emissions. So I said, no problem. Let me actually use my bicycle to actually uh, promote it as an alternative means of transport. So if I promote it as an alternative means of transport, we are shifting towards green transportation. And if we actually move to green transportation, what it means is that we are actually going to reduce carbon emissions in the atmosphere. Mm. And in the long term, we are also trying to control climate change, which is now a very big problem. Mm. So with all these, I said, uh, I need to do something. I have to protect the environment. It's very important. So this is the major thing that actually set me off to this, to this uh, journey. But aside that, uh, there's someone called jo uh, Joel Atinga. Joel Atinga is actually embarking on a Guinness World Record attempt in Accra. Yes, he's very young like I am here. So the thing is, how can I also support other people? How can you support the young ones who are growing? As young as I am, if I need support, I would want people to. So if he also needs support, we would have to support him in whichever way. So I also said, let me use this, my trip to also uh, throw my support for him, that is to encourage him to also do well. If he does well, he puts the whole of Ghana on the map. For us, you know, if he promotes kebab, that's what we have here. In fact, we are going to boost tourism. So all this, we are putting Ghana on the map. So with this, my trip, I decided to throw support for him. headquarters now and remember that remember that election headquarters as always is brought to you by petrosol your clean fuel in full quantity chartered institute of management accountant sima and the american institute of uh, certified public accountant together as the association of international certified professional accountant and the german ozone medical center alternative therapy dental wellness and beauty remember the election headquarters always for an informed electorate now, some traders in the Ashanti and Ahafo regions are proposing the choice of a female running mate for the new patriotic party in the upcoming elections. They believe such a choice will improve the party's chances of breaking the eight as uh, well as improving female participation in politics. The market women at a press conference also emphasized the need to choose a female from the Ashanti region for the ticket. Nane Ajima has a rest of the story. Speculation over who partners Dr. Mahmoud Bamia for the presidential election continues to gather momentum. Many in the Ashanti region are expecting the choice to be made from the region. Market women from major markets in the Ashanti and Bono regions are the latest to point out their expected qualities. They believe it is about time a woman is chosen to complement the vice president for the election. If the NDC has chosen a woman, the NPP must do the same. We want a woman from the Ashanti region, someone with the interests of women at heart. Already, some of them have shown lots of love to we traders. We want a woman with genuine intentions about us. If they refuse to give us a woman, we will not vote the NPP. We will consider other options. Women are very knowledgeable. Even the traders here, we are able to trade for profit every time. See how our market queen is managing things here. It shows how knowledgeable we are. We have love for the NPP and also vote them, but this time we want them to put a woman on their tickets.
na me kokro mo ti we die afi we die ye hia oba hia sesaye me ma no ye ba ye nya hwe ye ntwa ta ye hia me ma ye hia oba to them the appointment of some women to high office in the government in the government by the Nana Akufuado led administration is evident of their willingness to ensure gender equality emphasizing their belief in the party's ability to redeem the country from economic challenges they want their proposal to be given a careful consideration for join news Nana Yaojima Kumase now, former member of parliament for the Ejusu constituency, Kwabna Oswea Duomi, has announced his intention to contest the upcoming by election as an independent candidate. Now, the declaration comes a day ahead of the new patriotic party's primary to elect a candidate for the upcoming by election. At a press, a press release from the camp of the former MP attributes the decision to sever ties with the MPP to form what they claim. Uh, to be the reluctance of the party to deal with crucial concerns or the voter album. It further points to flaws in the election process for polling station executives, claiming the deceased MP with the help of regional party executives handpicked some persons for key positions. Nana Osei Bonsu is campaign aide of the former MP. The polling station executive in elections uh, in a Joshua was not done in accordance with what the general practice has been. Uh, we woke up one early morning uh, to the news that people had been selected to fill uh, police station executive positions. Uh, we protested, but the party would simply not hear or give us, give us hearing. And so the matter eventually found its way to court. And as we speak, the issue is still pending. And so it is surprising that uh, uh, the party has not made any effort uh, to, for, for even reconciling, at, at even reconciling the, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, aggrieved, aggrieved members of it, but then proceeding to, to conduct primaries when they know that there are pertinent issues to be addressed. This decision is even in response to calls by constituents. If you conduct, if you, if you even come here and conduct an opinion poll, we find out that almost everybody is calling for a comeback. And so it is a response, it is in response to that call. So we are, we are more than confident. We, are, we have an exuding confidence that we, 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 we win this election. So as it stands, there's no relationship at all with the new patriotic party? Uh, exactly, exactly. He's contesting on an independent ticket. Okay. The schedule for election has been released. And uh, now the process, the process is on, uh, still, still, still ongoing. Uh, I think forms, uh, uh, nomination forms will be filed uh, from next week, I think from 16th or so, I'm not too sure. With a, with a, but for now, uh, we, 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 we are doing the paperwork. We hit the ground running very soon. This is still the Joy News Prime. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with Showbiz. Please do stay.